Okay, FSX skills challenge. Here we go. Hi guys, my name is Peter Finch and welcome down to the channel. If you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button and please comment below on what you see in this video. And it is another FSX skills challenge, but it's, it promises to be a pretty awesome one. So if you don't know what the FSX skills challenges are, I started it about two years ago, I think I did my first one. And it's using the Foresight software on the GC Quad, well, pretty much any of the Foresight equipment. And you've got 14 targets to try and score the highest points that you can. It's five points for an inner ring, it's three points for a middle one, and then it's one point for an outer ring, it's zero points if you miss the target altogether. Now the world record, 58 points, became something of an obsession, I would say, about a year ago. And ever since that point, I've been trying to find ways to get the highest score in the world. And what I'm gonna do is during this challenge, I'll be jumping in and out just to explain a few things which are going on, which might be slightly confusing at some point. But let's get into it and let's see what I can do. Now, at this point during the day, I've already hit oh, hundreds of balls, really. I've been doing it for about two hours and this was just my latest attempt. So my secret weapon for that part of the challenge was this. So this is a 70 degree lob wedge. Now I basically got this 70 degree lob wedge made. Let me focus. So it was normally a 64 degree wedge, but it was bent to 70. And the guys at TaylorMade basically bent this for a very specific video that I'm doing about creating backspin. And that video will be going live hopefully tomorrow. But what I found is that in testing this club out for those short distances, so for the 10 yards, a shot over the wall, and at 30 yards, they were absolutely perfect. So I put it into the bag for this challenge, and as you can see, the result was pretty good. Right, let's get back to the remaining targets. Stenson. Now you may be wondering what I'm doing chanting Molinari and Stenson in a slightly psychotic manner. Well, I will tell you, basically Molinari, Stenson, when they hit bad shots, you very rarely see them have an emotional reaction. You know, they've trained themselves to keep themselves on a very level, even keel throughout their round so they don't have big jumps of adrenaline and that they can channel their emotions appropriately. But what it was allowing me to do was basically say to myself, no matter what the result of the shot, Forget about it, move on. Forget about it, move on. Next shot, next shot, forget about that result. Treat every shot as though it was the same outcome, a really positive one. And added into that, I wasn't looking at the score. So after I hit my shot, my eyes went down, I got my club out and I avoided looking at the cumulative score as I was going. And it was working pretty well. I managed to keep my emotions quite level. So 
Let's get back into it and see how I finish up. Stenson. Marinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Stenson. I've just looked at the score. Oh. Come on. Oh. 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 oh, I was trying not to look at the score all the way and I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. Oh. Right. Well, <laughs> come on then. Oh, just running out of battery in time as well. Well, let's try and put an exclamation mark on it. Stenson. <laughs> Molinari. Stenson. Molinari. Come on. Sick. <laughs> oh. So yes, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a long time coming. Oh boy, oh boy, am I happy. It is over in many respects. So beating the record by that amount, that was surprising, but it was just that middle run of just consecutive fives, which I've never ever done before. And you know, it's just one of those things where you hit form at the right time, you get the swing in the positions that you want it to. And yeah, it just it just all came together basically. And just that last bit, I actually, I, I don't know why I let myself look at the score just to see where I was at. And I actually hit a terrible drive at the end there. How he managed to finish in the five, I'll never know. But I got away with it, got a little bit of luck. And yeah, I just, just smashed it. Now let's just have a think about what I've learned over this period because remember all the stuff that I do as far as playing wise, quest for the open stuff and these tests, it's all about trying to figure out how I can become a better coach and hopefully help you guys improve as well. Now one of the big differences has definitely been switching back to progressive length irons. So when I was using the one length irons, I quite liked the concept but the ball flight was very flat. So therefore I wasn't really getting much of a descent angle coming into the greens. Now you can see here that really when I was having that run of amazing kind of fives the shots were pretty consistent in where they were pitching so what that was allowing me to do was hit that spot and really know that the ball was going to run out into the target into the five so that's something that you should bear in mind when you are thinking about the clubs that you're going to pick and you're going to try the fsx skills challenge don't let that be the overriding feature of picking your bag please the descent angle will allow more control when the ball lands seems obvious enough but again this taught me that now, one thing which I tried uh, about six months ago, I think it was, was just implementing a pre-shot routine, a proper pre-shot routine into the FSX Skills Challenge. Now, at the time, I felt that that worked. I didn't use it here because my pre-shot routine and the shots that I was hit hitting, they'd, they'd already been programmed in over years. So I didn't need a pre-shot routine. I didn't need to go through a pre-shot routine to pull my fire line, to pull my four line, because I knew exactly the shot 
that I needed to hit. I wasn't even looking at the distances because I was in a routine already of picking out the club, knowing the distance, hitting the shot. Picking out the club, knowing the distance, hitting the shot. I didn't need a pre-shot routine because I built one in subconsciously over this period of months. Now, the last thing that I learned is that having a bit of a, well, kind of like a mad desire to actually complete a challenge, it really kept me motivated, kept me going because it's completely pointless, like utterly pointless, apart from the learning that I've just talked about. And yet I got invested within the process and the feeling of contentment that I had after I actually completed it and just the, yeah, just the, the happiness that I actually felt of achieving something that I'd aimed to achieve. I mean, surely that that's what it's all about. I mean, that's what goals all about, setting yourself goals, trying to achieve them. And then having that feeling of fulfillment. I mean, yeah, I, that, it was it was fantastic. So guys, thank you for watching. That is going to be the last FSX Skills Challenge. I'm going to have to find something else to aim towards as far as kind of competitive practice is concerned. But thank you so, so much for watching. I know a lot of you guys enjoy these FSX Skills Challenge videos and exactly the process and getting pretty much in as, as invested as I do when I play. So it's been great to have you along for the ride. And yeah, we'll see where we go from here. So guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. If that's not earned your subscription, all that effort, then I don't know what will. Like the video as well and comment below. Let me know what you think. And yeah, see you down here next time. Ah. Oh.